Y'all know what it is, Chris in the building. Now, if you have a good question, we will let Wu teach us English. Yes, he did move to Canada when he was 10 years old, but... And you knew English perfectly when you came over? Nah, man, I didn't speak a single word. Not a single word. Yeah. Yeah. Not one word. And then when he was 11, he moved back to China, and then back to Canada. Then when he was 18, he moved to Korea. So really, he was only in Canada for maybe seven years while studying. English is not his native language. He had to learn it the hard way as a second language learner, just like you. He still considers China his home. China is, is, is home for me. That's, that's where I'm from. That's where my roots are at. And most of my fans are at, so. So how good is his English really? Well, let's just say I could live in China for 30 more years, and I would still have a Laowai Koyin. Laowai, really, Losing your accent when you're studying a new language is almost impossible. Chris Wu in the building. So we're gonna listen together and see why Chris Wu's English is so amazing. And if you want to speak English as good as he does, I highly suggest you take my pronunciation course. We are opening up the sales for round three today. The early bird price until June 1st is 99 RMB. Wow. After June 1st, you can still get the course for half price, 129 RMB. But after June 8th, when the course starts, it's going to be the original price, 258 RMB. Now, some of you have already taken the course in the first round and second round. So if you liked it, please do me a favor and share it with your friends. We're gonna have 12 lessons to cover all aspects of American English, including some things Wu Fan does very well, like Ruodu, Suodu, and Liandu. To register, it's very easy. Just add my course manager, Real Mike US. Then just pay for the course, get into a group chat, and I'll see you June 8th at the first live stream course. And I'm very excited. We have a lot of new courses coming up soon. So just keep in touch with Real Mike US for all the great courses I have planned in the next few months. All right, Wu Yifan, Yingyu, Daori Zemiya. Tari Yingyu, very good, good. Very good, good. By this time, you guys should already know I love Supreme. Tai Ren Zemiya Fa Supreme. Be Wang Jiyou, Bushu Super Me. I really respect Chris Wu a lot because not only does he have amazing amazing English. He's also really trying hard to bring Chinese rap and Chinese music into American mainstream music. I always want to hear from artists that are so popular everywhere, why being popular in America is such a big deal. Um, if I'd be able to break through in this market, you know, it'd really be a good example and someone that kids back home can look up to, you know, and also I'll be a pioneer. As a hip hop artist, an Asian hip hop artist, artist to break through in this market, I think that's that's like 10 times more meaningful to the, to, to the culture and to just all the musicians and, yeah. and hip hop artists back, back home in China. It'll, it'll open up new gates for them, it'll give them bigger bigger platform and just hope. I would say 99.9% .9 of native speakers would also think that Chris Wu is a native English speaker, even though he is not. He does make a few small mistakes, but they're so rare that it's probably as frequent as a native speaker. Yes, that includes me. I still make English mistakes sometimes. So Chris Wu often says he was influenced a lot by American hip hop music. When I first played playing basketball, you know, I was watching a lot of N1 mixtapes and, 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 and stuff like that. You know, I, was, I got super hooked on, you know, I love Iverson, you know. Of course. All that stuff kind of brought me into hip hop too. Was your mom like, this goddamn American culture? <laughs> <laughs> so some of the things that make Chris Wu sound so native are things like connected speech, weak sentence stress, contractions, and linking. Kind of like, like this. Just... All right, so right away we have a contraction. Kind of, kinda. Kind of like, kind of like, kind of like, kinda. I don't know, bro. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, bro. I don't know, bro. I don't know. Let's look at a few examples of weak stress. There's a lot of the, the population is huge, right? Yeah. Says, uh, because of that big of a population, there's a lot of people that's into hip hop music. They yeah. Do it. I heard a lot of good things about here. A lot of, a lot of. There's a lot of. There's a lot of. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of people. I heard a lot of good things. Heard a lot of good things. A lot of. There's also a few words he said that wouldn't be considered good proper English. 
but it's still very native and very natural sounding. I think it was two years ago or something, and, and he really loved it. Something, something. It was two years ago or something, or something, or something. Something. But this one definitely, um, I would definitely like to spend a little more time out here. Like, I definitely, definitely, definitely. Remember in English, we're kind of lazy, so it's very common to skip syllables. Definitely, uh, definitely, uh, definitely, definitely. Like, I definitely, like, I definitely, definitely, definitely. I actually never, uh, it's my first time here. I feel good. I did, and actually, uh, and this, this one right here is actually, uh, it's actually a doorknob. Actually, actually. Then actually, then actually, it's actually, uh, it's actually, uh, it's actually, it's actually. Here's a great example of weak stress. A then, little bit, okay. a little bit, and I hate that. A little bit. It's just cheating a little bit. 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 Very good. Very good. Good. Usually, your parents will teach you how to use a chopstick. Usually, I write the stuff that I write are more traditional. So here's another one which he can say correctly. Usually, 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 perfect. But sometimes we get lazy and we just say usually. Usually, usually, usually. Usually. So now I want to talk about a few words and phrases that Chris uses that make him sound so native. He really understands the slang and how people talk in Canada and America. I feel like, yeah, like, I feel like it's just more of experience. I feel like we say this all the time in English. I feel like, and also like. Yeah, I travel a lot. Like pretty much every other month I'll be flying. Like, yeah, I feel like, yeah, like. Like, 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 like. If you want to sound like, oh, I just said it again. If you really want to sound native, just say like a lot. And my mom was like, my mom was like, yeah, like, you know, like, like, whatever, like. And my mom was like, you're tall, go play some hoops. <laughs> yeah. And another great phrase, play some hoops. Play some hoops. I don't know, bro. Bro is another great word that a lot of guys say. It's always used in a very friendly tone. Can you buy me some lunch, bro? I don't know, bro. Where'd you learn to speak English like that, bro? I don't know, bro. I don't know, bro. Got that swag, so. Swag. Swag is like Sherpin, just like accessories you put on yourself. They might be women's, but you know, if, if it looks good, you, you gotta rock with it. When you rock them the right way, they become like a little fashion item. Rock it. It means wear it with confidence. Do something fashionable. Am I rocking this shirt? I mean, just a Putong de Tishu, so I have Busan swag, so I will put on rocket. I say, you know, it'd be really dope if he, he likes the record and we can, like, kind of do a collaboration. Uh, and also, I've been just checking out a lot of dope artists. So, what's also dope about these is dope. This is a great word, just means really cool or really awesome. Dope, dope, dope. Bro, that hot pot last night was like so dope. It's not all about the beef or whatever. The beef. This means like someone had an argument or a dispute. It's not all about the beef or whatever. Those two have some beef. All right, so is his English perfect? I would say 99.9% .9 perfect. There's two things that he does which tell me that he's not a native speaker, but they were very, very, very difficult to find. Please remember, I'm not trying to criticize him. I just want to point out a few small mistakes so that you can avoid them as you are learning English. The first thing is sometimes he forgets to add an S on plural words, which is a common mistake that non-native speakers make. Uh, usually your parents will teach you how to use a chopstick. Should be chopsticks, because you never have one chopstick. I'm not really a, like a huge fan of like sunglass. Sunglasses is always plural. Even though it's one thing, because it covers two eyes, we always call them sunglasses. No, yeah. one of my engineer that I work with uh, basically on a daily basis, he's from the Bay. So one of means there is more than one. So we must say engineers, not one of my engineer. Engineer that I work with. The second small issue he has is using the wrong verb tense. And I know this is maybe one of the hardest parts of English. For people that does not know who I am, for people that does not know, does not know. For people who do not know, not does. Uh, if I be, if I be able to break through in this market, if I be able to, if I be. If I be, should be, if I am. When I moved out, I was so young. Yeah. I was only 10 years old, so mm -hmm. I didn't felt much. So mm -hmm. I didn't felt much, felt much. Because didn't is already in the past. We don't need to make feel also past. I didn't feel much. You know, they had their kids come out and, and study and then go back or they would just immigrant or they would just 
immigrant, immigrant. So in this situation, he says they would just immigrant. He's actually using a noun instead of a verb. The verb is immigrate. He even knows word jokes in English. But this is actually a gift from, from my fans. A fan from my fans. And what's funny is my Chinese name is is also spelled F-A-N. So there you have it. If I only have five stars, I give him five stars. If 10 stars, 10 stars. He's done something very rare. He's gotten rid of the accent from his native language. So I hope this video was encouraging to you. Don't forget if you want more tips like this to register for my pronunciation course starting June 8th. Just add the manager's WeChat, Real Mike US, and I will see you on June 8th. 我是麦克老师，下次再见。